I have a question for both Shira and Manny. I just kind of want to know how has playing with two subs kind of broken up your team dynamic and hindered your progress here at Masters? I think Enzo and Feroth are really good players. Uh, Enzo, <laughs> Enzo and Feroth. And Feroth and Hybe are very good players. I think they perform very well on our team. So I can't downplay them as players. But I do obviously have to say that like we rely a lot on a system that me and Jake develop and work on really hard. And I think we have an over-reliance on that system, like a tactical system. And obviously, Durka, essentially. So those two things, like, we rely too much on Durka and we rely too much on a tactical system for us to win. And I think that um, going forward, that's something we need to think about as a team. Yeah, and just have a bit more self-reliance and not have to rely on these things, basically. So yeah, I think that these two subs have just, you know, all credit to them. They played really well. They played better than, like... <laughs> They probably played the best on our team, maybe. Um, but yeah, like, yeah. It completely destroyed everything, I guess. Hi, uh, this question is for Ferreth and Hyber. I was just wondering what kind of experiences are you going to take away from this event? I would say it's like great experience. As an, cause like, when you're playing like officials, everybody gets a bit of nerves. And this has helped me so much. Like, I can do pretty much anything. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't win anything, but like, still, I felt like I can do anything. And honestly, meeting the guys and everyone from the team, like, it's been very fun. It's definitely going to be a memory I will remember for a very long time. Yeah, same. Uh, I think this tournament is going to help me in the future because it's going to help me picture how important it is to have a specific preparation to play Masters and to actually win Masters. Uh, all the experience that both uh, Hybrid and me are getting here, all the experience that we got, it's going to help us for our future like in our careers because we have many challenges to come and these games you know the the focus you need to have the tunnel effect everything that could happen and when like you need to be prepared to win like you need to you know know everything before playing and having everything ready and i know that if one day i'm i have to play another masters i know what to do for the preparation now that's it. Also, like watching both Mini and Bolster work has been like super exciting for me. I'm definitely like kind of looking at the game in another way now. I am definitely taking many things from this experience yeah. to back home. Hey guys, I have a question for Bolster. Obviously, a lot of credit to Zeta as well. They played really well. Uh, what did they do that took you by surprise, or what did they do well in your eyes? Um, <laughs> uh, I think honestly they. They stepped up to the challenge. I think that was the most admirable thing. They came in and they didn't show the kind of same fear and kind of hesitation as previous times where like the more minor regions come in and play. They really, they really stepped up and proved why they deserve to be here as well. I hope that they also have a really kind of exciting game versus uh, NIP as well. They made full confidence plays, abusing our kind of weaknesses, which was taking map control, I guess. And they, they did it really well. They traded together uh, pretty well as well. And I think, yeah, I think, yeah. So you guys obviously picked Icebox as it's been kind of your comfort pick for quite a while now. But obviously, I mean, you didn't win it today. So what do you think kind of went wrong? I think that Chamber picked us apart. On our defense, we didn't know how to play around the middle of the map very well. They abused that lack of kind of macro understanding of the comp. We had a comp change that I think we had some holes in. And obviously, having 10 days to practice with two new players is kind of difficult to fill those gaps. So we saw that happen. Um, what was the factor of points were these results of the matches? Why did we lose? Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, Bill Nevis. Well, as, as I kind of previously said, I, I don't know if you guys boys got other, other things to say. I think that, um, you know, we're, a, we're essentially a new team. You just watched a new team play the game. Obviously trying to watch a new team play the game on this, the biggest stage that we got. That's what happens, you know, like we're really good players, but we had 10 days as a team, like, and that's what happened. It was you eight know? days, it was media. Oh, eight days. Yeah. Uh, can I add something? So basically, like, um, I think as a team, like we are sometimes really panicky when we lose the momentum and mainly like with two subs, uh, it added as well. So I feel like in some, in some rounds, we actually weren't in the rounds, like we were tunnel vision on something else like the panic was high but in the end i think the both matches were real playable with two subs big part of us losing was uh, hectic hecticness uh, i said 
Hi, this question is for many. Um, a lot of people have kind of pointed to Chamber as probably the most important, and a lot of people have kind of explained the stats behind it with a lot of players coming in with incredible stats on the agent. I was wondering if you kind of agree with that sentiment, and if you think that um, teams that kind of don't have a strong uh, Chamber player at this event currently are kind of behind in the meta. I generally disagree that Chamber is necessary in this matter i think that he's very good if you've got someone who really shines as like a duelist kind of sentinel player but i don't really agree that you need it like over a jet for instance like i don't think we should have durka playing too much chamber and i don't think magnum should play too much chamber there are maps where i think it's really good if you really think about it but it seems like a lot of um teams right now are defaulting to it just because it's a flashy agent that can get a free kill and dash away kind of thing i don't think it's that necessary to be quite honest i think it's quite lazy sometimes the way some people are playing it obviously people are always going to think it's strong because it's flashy but i think if you go really deep into it i don't think it's as strong as what people are probably making it out to be hi guys uh this question is for mini and also boaster it seems like the team was able to use this event as a way to uncover some of your guys weaknesses and maybe a reliance around Durka. When you guys do implement Durka back into the team, how will you use this experience to grow past these weaknesses you saw? Is it more time reviewing these VODs or does it stem around changing the practice to diversify your playstyle? It's not like this event uncovered this. I think that this has been something we've thought about a lot. Like there's no secret that we rely on a system and we rely on Durka sometimes to get us out of sticky situations. Like he's one of the best players in the world and I feel fucking terrible that like he's in the hotel room right now, like not, you know, he's been in quarantine, like waiting to play. And like, I don't blame anyone sitting here for that, but it's a sad reality that one of probably the best player in the world is trying to get out of quarantine right now, you know, and he can't play. As for like the future, I think it, it just comes down to hard work, to be quite honest. And like, a, it's a reality check that like, this is what happens if we don't have Dirk in our system like I think it's up to individuals to kind of put in that hard work and like me to figure out a system like as a coach to to facilitate the players growth I guess do you have any updates on when or whether we will see brave return to the roster I have nothing to say on that subject I don't know what's going on